Well, good evening, America. It is 7 p.m. Tuesday, July 2nd, and this is Queer News Tonight, the world's first live LGBTQ daily evening news. It is time to queer up the news. We begin tonight in Happening Now, an exciting new announcement. An amazing new digital television show is coming for the LGBT community called Gay Town Hall. Advertising, you participate in the LGBTQ debate. We have a sneak peek of the opening of this new show that is going to premiere tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Watch this. Well, isn't that exciting? As you can see, the largest collection of diverse LGBTQ personalities ever assembled will host this incredible and unique new show. Queer News Tonight has already met 12 of the hosts, and tonight we get to meet Ty Hauser. Before we meet him, watch this. Ty Hauser has taught at universities around the world, and he might just be a communist. Welcome, Ty, to uh, Q News Tonight. We can't <laughs> uh, wait to have this conversation. Hi, Al. How are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm great. Uh, so tonight, it all gets started, the premiere of Gay Town Hall. Uh, you have been uh, quite a fascination for many of us in the show. Uh, you're the only college professor participating. Uh, what, uh, what, uh, what brought you to wanting to do uh, something so unique and it's, groundbreaking? It this? strikes me that no one has a life if I'm the interesting one. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> the whole idea of the show um, is, is important. It's excellent. The, the goal of bringing together a whole bunch of diverse people from the community to try and work together to explain, understand, promote. Uh, those are the kinds of things that that we are that we do well when we are diverse, and I think we've got that going. I've uh, I've been reading about you. I understand you've taught uh, uh, university semesters in India and China and in uh, South America. Uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about how that has worked. Uh, it's one of my favorite parts of the job. It's not my full time job. My full time job is with Broward College, um, but because we have programs all over the world. Uh, when I'm not teaching for Broward College, I get the chance to go to those centers when they need uh, an English or a humanities teacher. Um, I get to meet really amazing students with wonderful, wonderful 
uh, backgrounds and stories to tell, and, and I really get a lot out of that. Ty, many of my friends uh, are, that are in RuPaul's circles especially have made jokes about you uh, by saying your college experience of being a professor around the world is going to come in very handy in Gay Town Hall in terms of schooling uh, all of these other children that are involved in the show. <laughs> well, I hope so. I mean, one thing that I think uh, most of these bitches lack is nuance. Uh, and so I'm hoping to be able to help them understand that not everything is yes and no. Not everything is in one or the other box. Now let's zero right in on it. Uh, I was also reading about you that you might identify as a communist. What yeah, these, is all of that about? These things all come back to haunt me. Uh, sure, I'll go with communist if I get to define it. Um, I'm just one of those elite academics that hides their Marxism uh, in the university. So yeah, communism, if I can use Marx as my communist uh, uh, leader, not communism if you want to talk about the dictators from the 20th century. Yes, okay, so I got that, and I couldn't help but take a pause when you called yourself elite. Um, oh. that's, that's an interesting uh, observation. One of the things I'm curious about is with you coming to Gay Town Hall, this is a unique platform. My friends ask me lots of questions about this. I continue to say it's kind of like a Zoom meeting on steroids because of the interactivity of so many diverse personalities, including yours. Uh, I understand the show's going to be talking about almost everything that affects the LGBT community. Yeah, the range of topics is outlandish. There's a, there's a through line in there somewhere, but I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, um, uh, I'm sure we're going to be uh, hearing a lot about Donald Trump and the election. Well, I'm ready to talk. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, 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 are you a, a Trump supporter? You're Absolutely not, a... not. No. Yeah. No good gay supports Trump. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I understand in reading the bio summaries of uh, the premier, uh, it's going to be talking about how many LGBTQ uh, in America actually do support Donald Trump. You're going to be talking about that in the premier episode. Yeah. I'll, I'll take my cue from Madeleine Albright. There's a special place in hell. <laughs> for people who vote for Donald Trump. I, I'm curious, uh, in terms of uh, the topics that you are looking forward to discussing, well, what's at the top of the list? What is it that you want to bring to LGBT America? Uh, I, uh, like I said before, I like nuance. So I like these really complex topics. Um, one of the things that has been in the news a lot lately is the J.K. Rowling thing. Um, uh, there are uh, other things like uh, Reverend Graham recently. And there's nuance in both of those things that I think we often ignore. Um, so I don't, I don't know that I'm always going to agree with everyone. Yeah. And, and one last thing, uh, Ty, I read in uh, your bio that you, uh, um, it's either hate to be wrong. Or no, I'm never wrong, Al. I'm always you're, right. You're always right. Did, did right. I read it correctly? Yeah. No, I'm always right. Yeah. Until you prove me wrong. I mean, I'm willing to accept that maybe I am wrong at something, but <laughs> you have to prove it before I accept that. Uh, I just can't wait to watch this experience. Uh, uh, with uh, a cannabis activist. America, we have been uh, introducing uh, you to many of the hosts. Uh, there's a Miccosukee Native Indian. There is an, uh, a very famous underwear model. Um, there is a, a feminine lesbian uh, identifying with big dick energy. Uh, there is just amazing personalities, and, and you're going to be right all of the time. Do I have this correct? You've got it right. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, the premiere episode is tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern. It's called Gay Town Hall. And Ty, we wish you all the luck. It sounds like so much fun. I think it's going to be a blast. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, great. Thank you. Well, good evening again, America. It is 7 p.m. Thursday, July 2nd, 2020. It is time to clear up the news. We are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your stories we're going to tell tonight, this evening, on Queer News Tonight. Tonight on the world's first live daily queer evening news show. Tonight's news about the gay community and the news from an LGBTQ perspective. Are our gay stories important to you? In headlines, politics, entertainment, gay culture, travel, religion, and more. Reported by respected anchors. Out of the closet and into the headlines on Q News Tonight. 
Well, thank you for joining Queer News tonight. We are live. This is unedited. Everything that you see happen in this show is happening uh, unedited. So anything can happen. Tonight we bring you the news of and a perspective from the LGBTQ community. I'm your anchor, Al Ferguson, and this is my co-guest anchor, Misty Eyes, and my co-guest anchor, David Hopkins. Let's queer up the news. Tonight we bring you the queer headlines. The LGBT community uh, in America is certainly diverse. The LGBTQ community around the world is vast. And tonight we bring you the bullet points of the queer news for today, uh, Thursday, July 2nd, 2020. We begin by uh, queering up uh, the news tonight of LGBT uh, and we celebrate the 4th of July, making note that our national holiday is this weekend. Let's begin our show tonight by querying up the world. We report that South, Korea, uh, South Korean president uh, is silent as pressure grows to enact the country's first ever LGBTQ protection law. Korea is facing increasing pressure to enact the country's first ever anti-discrimination legislation. Dubbed the Equality Law, the bill would set a milestone in South Korea by providing legal protection for all citizens, including LGBTQ people. It was proposed by South Korea's Progressive Justice Party, but requires the backing of President Moon, ruling his Democratic Party to pass. But President Moon, a former human rights attorney, has remained notably silent on this issue. Addressing the president, the National Human Rights Commission of Korea urged him to take a stand. I don't know that he's necessarily, it's, it's, it's Southeast Asia. Even if he's a human rights lawyer, they tend to be very reserved when it comes to speaking out about things. I don't know if I'm necessarily against him doing this, but it, it's a complicated issue. I think sometimes when we are speaking publicly, uh, we have to remember that our fans and followers and the people in your district are going to judge you harshly, whether it's good or bad. You can say, I love Walt Disney World, and somebody's going to be offended. I'm not surprised he's dragging his feet. I will be very surprised if he doesn't pass the law. I think uh, Korea's influence uh, in business in the United States, in North America, and Europe has a requirement that they fully embrace LGBT and civil rights in Korea. They are the most Western integrated uh, country in Asia, with the exception of Japan, and it's time for them to move into the 21st century for Europe and North America. Next, we queer up the world. Kellyanne Conway's teenage daughter posted anti-Trump TikTok videos calling him a rapist. <laughs> Claudia Conway, 15, has shared multiple videos on the platform where she has spoken out against her mom's boss, Donald Trump. In a recent video, which has more than 111,000 views, Claudia dances in front of comments where people highlight that she is, quote, anti-Trump. In another quote, finding out that Kellyanne's Kellyanne Conway's daughter is on TikTok and is super anti-Trump and has dozens of pro Black Lives Matter TikToks and TikToks telling Trump supporters to go fuck themselves is the bright spot of 2020 that I didn't know I was going to get but definitely needed one of the comments reads. Oh my goodness, that is indeed coronavirus good news. And I, I love <laughs> that in her situation, the apple fell into the neighbor's yard. Like literally, she's not even related to her mom in this situation and I'm automatically a fan. I cannot stand Kellyanne Conway. Ugh. I just can't. But I like her just this much more that her 15-year-old daughter is allowed free speech. Clearly, if Kellyanne Conway didn't want her to be allowed to do it, she would put a stop to it. So there must be a little bit of a human heart like the Tin Man somewhere in Kellyanne's okay. chest. That or her dad, who also dislikes Kellyanne Conway, is <laughs> letting her do this. <laughs> Now we queer up health. Big Pharma sues as the Insulin Affordability Act goes into effect. Watch this. Turning what was pain and anguish into activism and now today law. Named after Alex Smith, a Minneapolis man who died three years ago of complications from rationing insulin, Minnesota diabetics who need emergency insulin will now pay no more than $35 for a one-time 30-day supply. But the news was overshadowed after a pharmaceutical group sued to stop the program. 
and today they have filed a lawsuit to stop a meaningful, workable solution to the tragic deaths of those who suffer the consequences of that big business model. Minnesota diabetics who need emergency insulin supplies but can't afford them will be able to get the drugs starting yesterday under the new state law. The safety net program within the Alex Smith Insulin Affordability Act, which the legislation patch passed in April, will allow qualifying diabetics with less than seven days worth of life-saving drug left to pay no more than $35 to get a one-time 30-day supply from their pharmacy. As soon as the bill went into effect, however, the drug companies filed a lawsuit stating that the law infringes upon their right to sell their property. Well, it's exciting news. Um, it is a Bernie Sanders uh, certainly cheered the, uh, this state's action uh, for a more comprehensive health care. Likely it is not going to stand in the courts, though, in terms of mandating uh, pricing controls on the drug companies. This exists because of, as it's named for, Alex Smith, who was a young man who was having financial issues and had to ration out his insulin and then died because his body couldn't effectively help itself with the reduced amount of the drug. That was my point exactly. People are dying with diabetes, and if you need an emergency fund, go and get your life-sustaining ability. Next week, Queer Up the USA, or should I say, Queer Up Trash. An angry woman shouts, keep your HIV to Black Lives Matter protesters. Watch this. Trash! No peace! No peace! Fuck you! We're gonna give you no peace! Bitch! You fucking bitch! You live off of white people! The woman has not yet been identified, but the video of hers racked up over 1.8 million views and has been shared over 12,900 times. The protest was organized by the quote, if not us, then who group. However, local police intervened and shut down three blocks of traffic after this woman and other counter protesters began confronting the people marching for racial justice. Some of the men standing behind the woman are wearing a red Make America Great Again hat and another hat that reads, Re-elect Trump 2020, make liberals cry again. Another holds a sign that says, beer matters, it's okay to kill a beer. Girl, your ignorance is Girl. showing. It's like she said every racist, hateful thing that anybody could say in one sentence. You know I love uh, uh, camera phones and 2020. Uh, this went on and it's gone on for 40, 50 years, forever really. Uh, we're just getting to see it firsthand. These kind of people exist in our midst, and they're not only uh, anti-BLM, uh, but it's LGBT, mm -hmm. and it's Jewish, and it's women, and it's, and it's, and it's. Earlier when I was trying to Facebook stalk to find out who this crazy woman is, I found out that the building she's in front of, the Mansion House Cafe, hosted this counter-protest for the Black Lives Matter, and their social media has been completely shut down since. Now we queer up the world. COVID-19 shines a light on air pollution issues in Bangkok. Footage shows how clean the air is after three months of coronavirus lockdown in Bangkok, Thailand. The tropical skyline was clouded in a toxic smog made of harmful particles at the start of the year, caused by construction, cars, and agricultural fires. However, with many projects on hold and builders sent back home to their neighboring countries, pollution has dropped. A blanket ban on tourists since the end of March, which is still active, has also significantly reduced the number of cars, taxis, minivans, and coaches on the road. We queer up the USA by reporting Tucker Carlson, my favorite, mm -hmm. loses his mind over replacing Columbus Day. Watch. Ron Johnson of Wisconsin and James Langford of Oklahoma are both Republican senators. Today, they introduced legislation to abolish Columbus Day. They want to delete it from the national calendar and replace it with Juneteenth. This is a big change. Americans have celebrated Columbus Day as long as we have had a country since 1792. Columbus Day is a celebration of the nation itself. That's why it's a national holiday. Juneteenth is newer. Three weeks ago, many people had never heard of it. Even the media seemed oblivious to its existence. 
From 2012 through 2017, CNN did not mention the word Juneteenth a single time on the air. Barack Obama, who was the president, never tweeted about Juneteenth once during the entire span of his presidency, not one time. Juneteenth commemorates the freeing of the American slaves. Emancipation is one of the great moments in America's history. It's why we consider Abraham Lincoln a hero. Tucker Carlson went on a lengthy tear against two Republican senators proposing that Columbus Day be scrapped as a federal holiday and replaced by Juneteenth. This proposal really set Carlson off Wednesday night, saying that Republicans are just trying to appease the hysteria going on around the country. He went on to tell viewers they should let the senators know they see them trying to cancel Columbus Day and re referencing recent coverage of George Washington statutes and statues and Mount Rushmore, declared that other federal holidays could be next. Next week, we're up the USA. COVID-19 is endangering Florida's manatees. Florida manatees remain in troubled waters because of the coronavirus pandemic. Specifically, the en environmental benefits and lower pollution may not be helping the gentle species, according to research. The pandemic has led to more unsafe boating activity, delays to environmental project launches, and even changes in public policy, none of which favor these gentle giants. Deaths of at-risk manatees climbed by about 20% from April through May compared to 2019. Next week, we're up the road to Stonewall. Town rejects gay pride resolution because there is no straight pride. A parade happened anyway. A small town's government refused to recognize Pride Month, saying it would, that it would be unfair because there's no straight pride. But LGBTQ activists armed with rainbow flags, feather boas, and balloons put together an ambush pride parade for the town this past Saturday. This past May, the town council in Emo, Ontario, a population of 1,333 near Canada's border with Minnesota, voted against a resolution recognizing June as Pride Month in a two to three vote. That's when Borderland Pride, an organization behind several pride celebrations in towns near the Minnesota slash Ontario border, Co-chair Douglas Judson started to put together a plan, working with residents and businesses in the area to plan an ambush event. We continue on the road to Stonewall by reporting that 75,000 have already signed a petition to replace the statue of Columbus with one for Marsha P. Johnson. When the transgender activist Marsha P. Johnson was alive, there were no murals created in her honor. There were no institutes in her name, and there were certainly no monuments recognizing her activism. In fact, according to historians, Johnson, now recognized as one of the most influential forces of the modern LGBTQ rights movement, was told to march in the back of the New York City first gay pride march in 1970. Now, more than 75,000 people have signed a petition to have a statue of Johnson erected in her hometown of Elizabeth, New Jersey, in place of its existing Christopher Columbus monument. We can only hope that this comes to fruition. Next week, Queer Up Business. Facebook doesn't think threatening to murder LGBTQ people counts as hate speech. Facebook has responded to the activist's complaints about one particular post from a user named Abdullah, which translates to, quote, if you think it's your right to act on sodomy, then it's my right to throw you off a roof. Facebook reportedly responded to the queer MENA activist by replying that the post, quote, doesn't go against our community standards, including hate speech. 22 LGBTQ plus activists and groups have written an open letter to Facebook urging them to take more action against such violent rhetoric in the Middle East and North Africa as it does in Western countries. Now tonight, let's catch up on all the news surrounding COVID-19 with our quarantine quickies. The first story tonight is our daily reporting of coronavirus facts, especially important to the LGBTQ community. First, we report on coronavirus case numbers. 
Based on the standard acceptance of 7% of population of the LGBTQ community, the world's LGBTQ COVID-19 cases stand at 763,314, while America's LGBTQ COVID-19 cases stand at 196,074. We remind you that America is ground zero of the worldwide pandemic, the USA is just 4.4% of the world's population, and today America is 25.6% of all of the world's cases. Next, we report on coronavirus deaths. The world's LGBTQ COVID-19 deaths stand at a staggering 36,441, while America's LGBTQ COVID-19 deaths stand at 9,170. The USA is 25.6% of all of the world's deaths. Next is testing facts. As of today, we have 35 million and 7,000 tests taken. And as a result, Queer News Tonight recognizes our Hall of Fame top states in testing, which as of tonight is number three, New Mexico, number two, New York, and number one, Rhode Island. Queer News Tonight also recognizes our Hall of Shame, the states doing the worst job in testing, and we continue to suggest LGBTQ America, we hope you don't live in one of these states tonight, which are number five, Kansas, number four, Colorado, number three, Oregon, number two, Idaho, and number one, still no testing going on in Puerto Rico. Quarantine quickies. Trump tells us, quote, coronavirus is going to disappear on the worst day of new infections yet. LGBTQ, beware, watch. This. As the U.S. reports record highs of new coronavirus cases, President Trump repeated his claim that the pandemic will soon disappear. I think that at some point uh, that's going to sort of just disappear, I hope. You still believe so? Disappear? Well, I do, I do. Yeah, sure, at some point. And I think we're going to have a vaccine very soon, too. Lately, Trump has ignored grim assessments from his own health officials and instead focused on stoking cultural battles. Donald Trump has been saying the same things again and again for months. And as you just heard, it isn't any more true now than it was before. The facts are clearly against the president here, and him not wearing a mask and ignoring all sense and science isn't any more clever today than it was back in March. Quarantine quickies. Kansas City mayor receives racist threats over mask order. You should hang from a tree. Watch this. The mayor of Kansas City, Major Missouri, Trooper. receiving a death threat, been called the N-word. Why? Well. People who say it uh, say that's because he mandated masks in his city. And he's out front now, the Democratic mayor of Kansas City, Quentin Lucas. Mayor Lucas, I appreciate uh, your, your time. Um, you announced your order mandating masks on Friday, and it was a mandate. Then you received texts from a person calling you the N-word, saying you should, quote, swing from a tree. Um, this, is, this is the text. You screen grabbed it. The mayor of Kansas City, Missouri, received threatening and racist messages over an order requiring residents to wear a mask while in public spaces, the worst of which declared that he should swing from a tree for instituting this policy. The order, which was announced last Friday, will be in effect for two weeks. The threats show a string of texts accusing the mayor of not responding to whites. The sender also appeared to be upset about the mask requirement, asking, quote, what are the repercussions for not wearing a mask in public starting on Tuesday? But before Lucas could reply, the sender proceeded to send him the N-word and implied that the mayor should be lynched. You know, this is a growing concern for me because masks are absolutely mandatory. And we remind you, every Tuesday night we do Q's Q&A on coronavirus for the LGBT community. Dr. Howard Grossman is here, a very respected virologist, and he says number one, number one, number one for 16 straight weeks is a mask. Every study proves it. I'm concerned about how mayors are being literally abused for trying to embrace the science and the medical advice of using a mask. See, to me, this story and the last story are actually the same story. It's about a country where a president can completely ignore and lie to everyone, who can call Black Lives Matter hate speech and expect the population to not resonate with that. He is helping to feed this, this hateful behavior, this misinformation and this racism, and it, you know, fish rots from the head down. The shameful thing is, if a white person were to say a law that 
you had to wear a mask and you got mad and you tweeted them or texted them about lynching them, it, it's clearly systemic racism and you're openly hating and being a racist. It's disgusting. Well, that is our quarantine quickies for tonight. Next, we queer up our segment called Good News. After we finish our quarantine quickies, we'd like to lighten it up, as you can tell. And we've reported on the statistics and facts for the day. Uh, but now we want to report on something that made us smile today in Good News. And this is Good News. Firefighters donate to help rebuild a gay bar. After a fire in May destroyed HG Roosters, one of the few gay bars in West Palm Beach, Florida, many organized help raise funds to rebuild. The club, less than three miles from President Trump's Florida home of Mar-a-Lago, has had trouble raising funds due to the pandemic. But just this morning, the West Palm Beach Firefighters Union surprised the bar with a check for $9,000 to help rebuild. As gay bars across the country are struggling due to pandemic, Seeing a local community step up to help support LGBTQ businesses is definitely good news. And because it's important to support preservation of our history, tonight we're broadcasting from our studio set in the middle of the World AIDS Museum and Education Center. The museum is in Wilton Manors in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We joke. We're coming from the gayest place on planet Earth. Never truer words told. You wore and, Paisley two days in a row. And we would like to, uh, that's actually funny. We'd like to uh, thank our set designer, Concepto Modern Living, here in Fort Lauderdale for making this set in this living museum possible. We're going to end uh, tonight's broadcast with what we call the big finish. These are short story mentions of LGBTQ news or news with a gay perspective. So here we go. First on Q News Tonight's Queer News Tonight's The Big Finish. The Heretic in Atlanta closes. No more gay men dancing tip to tip because of COVID-19. This one really hits home for me for multiple reasons. First of all, The Heretic is very much like my home bar of Ramrod here in Fort Lauderdale. And also the amazingly sexy South Florida local Dan Slater was DJing that party. Oh, I'm sure that was a sweaty, delicious time, but you know, you gotta be careful of COVID. <laughs> the bars were the first thing to close and they'll be the last thing to open. The fact is when you're drinking, you're not wearing a mask. How can you drink with a mask on your face? Also, when you get inebriated, you're going to be a little more loose and I don't care, let's make out. And then guess what? I do that sober. I, want, I wonder if Misty knows that that's how she delivers the news every single night. With she a mask? Sounds, no, she sounds that exact same. Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> Um, uh, when I saw the pictures on the Heretic, uh, I was jealous as hell. Uh, honestly, it, it looks like so much fun. It, it reminds me of how much fun we used to have. The band has stopped playing. We've got to realize we've got to do other things to get this under control. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, this closure is true. Uh, the world will come back, but just not tomorrow. We continue in the big finish by stating and, and, and reporting that the musical Hamilton goes from Broadway to America's living rooms. And you know, to reiterate last night, meh, if I want to see guys in tights and wigs, I could go to the drag shows once they reopen. <laughs> you know, I'm actually a little bit excited about this. I just found out it's going to be on Disney Plus, and I have Disney Plus. I do work for a nonprofit company and I have a nonprofit paycheck and I could not fly to New York to go see Hamilton, but I have been dying to see it for a long time. As someone who has seen Hamilton, you times. are going to have a fabulous time. This is a not miss. Find somebody. Uh, in fact, this Saturday night, everyone, let's go over to Misty's house and let's yeah, watch. Yeah, we'll all wear masks and <laughs> what? No. It's going to be like the heretic. All right, in the big finish, did you hear? Putin wins 16 more years of control in Russia. And here we're hoping that Putin Jr. doesn't win six more months. <laughs> Girl. Girl. Girl, that's it. Girl. <laughs> uh, Putin uh, is basically um, the, the... Yes, the, girl. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing to me. Khrushchev couldn't crush uh. America. 
and Putin sneaks in through the back door. It's all of that sneaky training he got at KGB. He That's sneaks why. In the back door. Are you saying Donald Trump's a bottom? Yes, Donald Trump is his bottom. <laughs> we continue in the big finish by reporting drag race legend Gia Gunn begs for forgiveness after calling COVID 19, ready for this, a hoax. Yeah, just like her having talent is a hoax. <laughs> She's actually very talented. She's pretty. pretty. That's but good. I was going to make a joke. You can't be pretty and smart on the same day. And also my second <laughs> thing. I say it all the you time. You read David and then you deliver no. that? I'm saying Gia Gunn. It's hard to be pretty and smart on the same day. Maybe, and I, I don't know, maybe she was surrounded by Republicans. I don't know about her family, but I don't know why she would... Think that, but I'm glad she apologized. Give the girl a break. Uh, Gia, it was a dumb statement, but your apology makes it forgiven. In the big finish, it is Back to the Future's 35th anniversary. You know, I used to love those movies until I started working with Biff. I. <laughs> By the way, wow, I can't with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, said, yeah. you derailed the whole train. Um, by the way, when I was little, Michael J. Fox and I were engaged in my head. Yeah. Michael J. Fox in that movie was so damn sexy. He looked so good in jeans. He's one of those kids, uh, young adults, let's say young adults, so yeah, I don't get really uh, red, that absolutely looked perfect in every possible way in those jeans. I'll never forget it. Loved, loved the movie. Back to the Future. Loved it. And the DeLorean, too. Come on, the DeLorean. The Big Finish. On with the countdown. Happy 50th birthday to American Top 40s uh, radio program. You know, I, I grew up in the 80s loving this because whenever I wanted a new song, I could hold the tape recorder up to the yes. stereo and catch all the new ones. And then it blew my mind when I found out that Casey Kasem was also the voice of Shaggy on Scooby-Doo. You know, he, he created an amazing thing. I'm glad to see it still going. You, I'm super glad to. Yeah, you're no longer cool, by the way, holding it up to steal music <laughs> that way. I couldn't afford things. I was poor white trash. Yeah. Do you do you remember Casey Kasem being part of the New Year uh, the New Year's Eve event in New York? Mm -hmm. uh, American Top Forty was an institution once upon a time. Uh, when David was young, which was a long, long time ago. And uh, I was younger, even longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> it was the way we measured what was important in American music. So mm -hmm. congratulations on 50 years. And um, the guy that does it now, eh, he's pretty good too. I mean, he looks good. Two bets radio. And that is today's news for the LGBTQ community on the world's first daily LGBTQ evening news show. Remember, if it's important to the LGBTQ community, it's important to Queer News Tonight. But you must help us. Click subscribe on YouTube and share this news. We are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. As we've proved tonight, this is the only source, the only live LGBT news in the entire world. Your community needs your support. You are not alone unless you're out wearing Paisley. We will get through this crisis. We are here with you. And this is Q News Tonight. And thank you for joining us. I'm Al Ferguson. And that's it. And I'm we'll see I. you. <laughs> and <No>. I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> and my partner uh, tonight, uh, David Hopkins and Misty Eyes. And we will see you a a daily at 7 p.m. And don't forget to tune in after this program for the Gay Town Hall premiere at 8 p.m. Eastern. Good night, everyone.